And welcome back once again, options traders. Well, I thought it would be a good follow on video to talk about two common trading goals. Ones that you hear a lot of traders have. You could almost think of them as trading philosophies, but they're just really bad ideas. And I got this idea after the last video that I posted about the Kelly betting system or the Kelly trade sizing. And in that video, I showed that in order to maximize the size of your bankroll or the size of your account, according to the Kelly betting system, it's a balance between the probabilities and the odds or the payoffs. And that's really the key to this video. And one of the big keys to making money in the markets, it's a balance between probabilities and payoffs. So to see why, let's take a look at trading goal number one. This is one of the things that you hear a lot of traders talking about, and that is to win the majority of their trades. And traders will say, oh, I just want to win 80% of my trades, for example. And they assume that if they are winning the majority of their trades, that all is well, and they will obviously have more winners than losers, and therefore have more profits than losses. And this is where the fallacy comes in. The percentage of the winners is not the entire story. It's again about a balance. You must balance the probabilities with the payoffs, or as we talked about in the Kelly betting video with the odds, that's what shows the payoffs. So yes, a high probability to win sounds great, but if that's combined with unfair payoffs, it's going to lead to losses. So for example, and I've shown this example in previous videos, but let's say that we have 10 numbers and we're going to throw them into a hat and you get to pull out, let's say the numbers one through eight and you're going to win. Okay, so you've got an 80% chance to win, but does this mean that it's necessarily a great bet? Well, as we talked about in the Kelly betting sizing video, this would also be one to four odds. And what this simply means is that because you've got the majority of the times that you're going to win, 80% of the time, you would actually have to pay $4 in order to make one. And if you did that, in the long run, you're just going to break even. It's not a good deal, it's not a bad deal, it's just a fairly valued deal. So this also shows why it's not just about the probabilities because that gets factored into the payoffs. But here's where it can be a bad deal. What if the payoffs are one to four and a half? or one to 4.1. In other words, we're making you pay a little bit more than fair value. Fair value says you should be paying four, but if this number is even just a little bit higher, it's going to be a bad deal for you. Now we could also do this. We could actually let you receive less. So maybe if this was 0.9 to four, in other words, you had to pay four, but would only win 90 cents. Two different ways of saying the same thing that now the payoffs are stacked against you. So if this is the game that you're going to win 80% of the time, but the odds or the payoffs are at one to 4.5, this is what you look like. Here's a simulation of 5,000 attempts in Excel. Now, of course, they're not always going to look like this exact path, but take a look at the far right side of the chart. That's one thing that we know for sure is that you are going to be very deep into losses even though you are winning 80% of the time. So hopefully this shows you that it's not just about the percentage of winners that matters. So the problem with the high percentage of winners is that high percentage of winners only matters if the size of the losses is contained. See, if you make this as your goal, I wanna win 80% of my trades or 60 or 70, whatever percentage you pick, it's going to force you to take quick profits because that's your goal. Oh, I'm up 10%. Let me close it because now I can say I've got a winner. I've got another winner. Let me close it. So now I can say I've got another winner on the board. But what happens is in order to get those very quick high percentage of winners, you're taking very small profits. And that's probably going to skew those payoffs against you. All right, so that's the first one. Be very careful about having a trading goal of simply I want to win the majority of my trades. So what about trading goal number two? Well, this is related and traders will sometimes say, I want to make the average gains larger than the average loss. So now we're saying, I don't really care 
if I have the majority of winners, let's say above 50%. In fact, I might only win 30% of the time. But if I can have my average gains being far larger than the average losses, then hey, everything's good and I will make money. So as an example, a trader might say, I want my average gains to be 35 times larger than my average losses. This might be a goal. And again, this is a very bad idea. Why? Because it's about balance. In this case, you must balance the payoffs with the probabilities. See, here you're focused on the payoffs. I want 35 times more on the trades that I win compared to the ones where I lose. But we've got to balance that with the probabilities. So sure, a high average gain sounds great. However, if these high average gains are combined with unfair probabilities, it's going to lead to losses. It's always about balancing the payoffs with the probabilities. So let's take a look. Is it a benefit to have your average gains 35 times larger than your losses? A lot of traders are going to say, of course it is. Well, let's take a look. Here's a real simple way to do it. Game of roulette. Walk into any casino, you're going to find 38 spaces on the wheel. And if you pick a single number to come up and you win, you'll find that the casino pays off at 35 to one. That means for every dollar you bet, you're going to win $35. So again, does this sound like a great deal? Well, let's take a look. If you played this game 38 times on average, what's going to happen is you would lose 37 times. You would have 37 losses of a buck. And then on your 38th try, again, on average, you would win and you would get this $35 payoff. Well, take a look at this. Look at your average losses. Sure, your average loss is a dollar. Take a look at your average win. Your average win is $35. Your average gain is 35 times larger than your average loss. And yet if you do this, playing roulette at 35 to one payoff, this is what your profit and loss will look like, again, after 5,000 attempts. Even though your average gain is 35 times larger than your average loss. So how can that be? It's because you have a favorable payoff, but you have unfavorable probabilities. So in this case, the problem with the high payoffs is that the high payoffs only matter if the loss percentage isn't disproportionately high. So again, it is about balance. A high percentage of winners only matters if you control the size of the losses. And high average gains only matter if the probability of winning is in proper proportion to losing. So those are just some really good points to think about for this new year of 2022. So I hope that helps you to keep the goals in perspective. You have to be real careful about trying to shoot for a high percentage of winners or for a very high payoff. You've got to balance them. And the best way to do that is with your options and by hedging, rolling, and morphing. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa to z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.